The data also shows Asians are shafted. Are medical schools racist? Okay, this question is really, really, really important because it reflects a society that trades efficiency for equity while slowly erasing meritocracy. That's what we're investigating in our quantitative reasoning class at the University of Boston, which is a core class that all of our students take. And we're focusing on probability and statistical modeling. So how do you take complex systems that kick off data, that generate data, how do you take that data and then build a model for that system? Once you have that model in place, how do you make statements or learn about that system with this simple parsimonious model. So one of the things that I love about UATX is that we can ask and we can probe provocative questions with data. And I love this because I'm a data scientist, statistician by training. We're looking at never before analyzed data from six public medical schools in Texas. Gender, race, a score of situational judgment called the Casper score, essays, all the interviews that they do, not to mention all of their academic credentials like MCAT, GPA, science GPA. So with all of that information and with the knowledge of whether or not they got in, students are going to be building a statistical model to try and assess whether or not medical schools are discriminatory. The answer is surprising and devastating. All right, so what are we doing in quantitative reasoning to try and quantify discrimination? Well, let me show you the steps that our students will be taking as they enter the final week of class. The first thing is we need to define this parameter, the main thing that we're interested in, the chance of getting into medical school. So let's, let's call the chance of getting into medical school, P, I'm gonna write this out, chance of getting in. With this parameter, okay, we're gonna build a model. So the idea is that we wanna take all of the other things that are measured in this data set and have those be inputs to a model that will then output a predicted chance of getting in. So the way that we do that is we're going to do a few funny things. So the, the first thing I want to write down is this fraction of P divided by one minus P. This is a chance of getting into medical school. This is a chance of getting rejected from medical school. Notice that it's one minus a probability. This is called the odds. So if you guys are familiar with gambling or with betting, this ratio of probabilities is called the odds. We're actually gonna model this, but we're not gonna model the odds itself. Instead, we're going to take the logarithm of the odds, okay? We're gonna take the logarithm of the odds and we're going to write the log odds as a function of everything that I care about in terms of measuring and quantifying discrimination. So that will be, first and foremost, a coefficient beta one times gender plus a coefficient beta two times race plus a third piece of this function. Remember, I'm just writing down a formula here of everything else. Now, what is included in everything else? Well, it could be anything that you might imagine. Test scores, MCAT, GPA, science GPA, interview transcripts, essays, all of that can be encapsulated into this final piece. And what this just says is that, well, what do I expect to influence my chances of getting into medical school? Potentially gender, potentially race, and all other merit, academic, essay, interview-based metrics. So with the specification, what we're saying is that, well, we believe the chance of getting into medical school should be related to gender, should be related to race, it should be related to everything else. And it seems unusual that I'm writing the log odds as a what is called a linear function of these things. But what this buys me is the following formula for the chance of getting in. So the chance of getting in now is going to be just this fraction, one divided by one plus exponential negative, all of this stuff. This is called the linear predictor right here all of this stuff. So we're going to do beta one gender plus beta two race plus F of everything else. This is called a sigmoid function. And this is a perfect function to model probability. Why? Well, if this crazy exponential term right here gets really small, this is going to asymptote towards zero and the probability will go to one. If this gets really, really big, that means the denominator gets really, really big, and this is going to push the probability towards zero. So 
this function, this formula for the probability lies between zero and one, which of course we might expect a probability should be between. So what's beautiful about this is that we can talk separately about gender's effect on the chance of getting in, race effect on the chance of getting in, all of this other academic merit, interview, essay, situational judgment related stuff as a function of getting into medical school. And so the beautiful thing about this technology, and this is called a regression model, is that I can hold everything else fixed. I can hold everything else fixed and I can see how gender independently changes the chance of getting in and how race independently changes the chance of getting in. If these medical schools are indeed abiding by the Civil Rights Act, we would expect beta one and beta two to be exactly zero or statistically indistinguishable from zero. If they are not, then there's potentially some dubious stuff going on. So the beauty, again, of this type of model is that we can hold everything fixed. We can fix all other credentials, all other academic qualifications at a single value and toggle between race or toggle between gender. And if we see differences in the chance of getting in, that actually is evidence of discrimination in medical school admissions. First up, Lucy and Andrew are going to talk about UT Southwestern Medical School admissions. Y'all take it away. All right, guys, like Professor Pell said, Lucy and I were tasked with figuring out if there was racial or gender discrimination among University of Texas Southwestern Medical School applications. Okay, this question is really, really, really important because it reflects a society that trades efficiency for equity while slowly erasing meritocracy. And if you think about it, you don't want your brain surgeon, your doctor who's operating on you, to be someone who is selected for characteristics not based on merit. You want them to be qualified and you want them to be good at their job. So our research question is, is there racial or gender discrimination at UT Southwestern Medical School admissions? So to begin, we took the data that Professor Pels provided us on Populi. So we took two CSV files and we brought these into our, our studio. Uh, first, we had to clean and merge this data. So we merged the two CSV files together. Uh, we loaded these various libraries, and then uh, we actually cleaned the data. So as you can see in the bottom left, you have 15 race categories, and some of them are repeats. Some of them, like multiple or unreported or other, you can't even use, and they just skew the data. So after cleaning the data, this is what our race categories looked like. So we summed it down from 15 to 5, and that cleaned up the whole data and made everything easier to look at. So there are some raw differences, as we could see, between races and genders. And then there are also some potential confounders. So these groups may differ naturally in their GPA, MCAT, and other things. And then also some other potential confounders could be rec letters, personal statements, things like that that can't be qualit quantitatively measured. And so that could possibly explain these raw gaps. But we need to statistically model this with a logistic regression to see for sure. And so in our regression, we included GPA, MCAT, race, and gender as predictors. And our baseline category was Asian males. And so if race and gender remain significant after controlling for all these other variables like MCAT and GPA, then that suggests a potential disparity that's not explained by academic performance. And so here we did a little bit of simulating and bootstrapping. So as we can see, we broke down the different categories and then we looked at the simulated admits and the actual admits by percentages. So as we can see, Asian simulated versus actual, it drops down a bit, same with white. And with Hispanic and African-American, it goes up some. And with unknown and other, they stay the same. And so they're not the focus of our analysis. We're mainly looking at the groups in which the actual admits are less than they should be and the groups which the actual admits are more. So our logistic regression model, uh, we needed this model to show us all of these different uh, numbers to look at the data from a different perspective and to see what is actually going on here. So on the left, that's our, that's our code for this logistic regression model. And on the right is the actual logistic regression. And all of these are just to test whether race or gender remain significant predictors of acceptance. OK, so we have all these values. We wanted to break them down and analyze them some more and really look at what's going on here. So like I said, our question about race and gender being significant predictors of acceptance after controlling for GPA and MCAT. So holding all of that the same, we're looking at just race and gender. So the coefficients we have here are how being in each group affects the likelihood of admission compared to Asians and males, which is our base category. So the coefficients are on the top right, those highlighted values. And that just shows how likely each group is to get in relative to the base population 
holding everything else constant. So African American, we have 2.79, Hispanic 1.33, Native American or Pacific Islander 3.7, white is negative 0.558, female is 0 0.917. So I highlighted the most significant groups there, and that is Native American, Pacific Islander, and African American. But we also have to test for statistical significance, which is how meaningful the effect is on the outcome. So the racial groups are down here on the bottom right, and then we have female, we have GPA and MCAT. So we look for a p-value of less than 0.05 for this. And as you can see for African-American and Hispanic groups, that p-value is extremely low. So we're very, very confident in our ability to predict that estimate or that um, coefficient right there. And then Native American or Pacific Islander, it's also pretty low. Same with white and female is also pretty low. So GPA and MCAT are pretty low, just like African-American and Hispanic. So we're pretty sure GPA and MCAT are very big predictors and African-American and Hispanic are very big predictors as well. So we also have standard error and z-value. So standard error is the measure of the variability or precision of that coefficient estimate I talked about in the last slide. And so we do have a higher standard error for African Amer or Native American and Pacific Islander of 1.19724, which is higher than the African American or Hispanic or white groups. So that is something to keep in mind. And then also the decline to answer is a very high error. So we excluded that from the focus of the analysis as well. And with C-value, that is another very interesting option that we have to look at the data. So it's a measure of how many standard deviations the group is from the mean. And with a 95% confidence interval, this C-value of plus or minus 1.96 is considered large. So actually, all of the categories we looked at are large, but African-American, Hispanic, GPA, and MCAT are exceptionally large categories, while white, female, and Native American or Pacific Islander also play a big role as well. So we looked at which factors are significant, and that means having a dramatically high estimate for a z-value or a coefficient and a valid significance level of 0.05 or less. So African-American, Hispanic, Native American, Pacific Islander, female, MCAT, GPA, and white all have an effect with white having a negative effect. Clearly there is something going on here. Black and African-American applicants have roughly 16 times the odds. So we take the odds ratio, which is, we take the 2.79, and that turns out to be 16 times the odds of acceptance. Whereas Hispanic applicants also have about 3.8 times the odds of acceptance. And white applicants have significantly lower odds they have around a 43% ch lower chance compared to the reference, which is Asian male. And these differences are statistically significant and suggest that race plays a strong role in admissions decisions. And then finding on gender, again, we found that there was something weird going on with gender. Uh, females have a two and a half times higher chance of it being accepted compared to males. And that implies that uh, beyond academic factors, gender also plays a role in uh, admission outcomes. So the overall implication is that, yes, race and gender have significant associations with admissions outcomes. So the bottom line, the logistic regression implies that there is substantial differences in acceptance based on race and gender, and that's beyond what GPA and MCAT alone explain. Uh, this does not confirm intentional discrimination, but it does show that these groups have significantly higher or lower odds of admission, even after controlling for merit-based qualities. So the data shows that doctors are being selected on features other than competence, which means that likely they will be less competent, they won't be good surgeons, they won't be able to treat you effectively. Major problem.